Hello everyone and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial and today we are going to be talking about widgets. Widgets are essentially in-game user interface or UI for short which allows the player to interact and visualize specific in-game events and in-game information to make the game a overall more fun experience to play. Trust me, I think you know what a widget is, but now it's time for me to show you how to apply it in Unreal Engine 5. So as you see, as always here, I have our third person game template up and ready to go. And let me go ahead and create a nice and simple widget here for you. So first thing I'm gonna do is hold control and click the space bar here. This is gonna open up my content drawer. And for organization's sake, as always, I'm gonna create a new folder here and call it widgets. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and double click on this and for right now, um, this tutorial, I'm going to create a health bar, a very simple health bar, uh, but I'm going to call this WB tutorial. So to do all of that I'm doing right now on the screen, you're going to go ahead and right click. You're going to go user interface. You're going to go down to widget blueprint and you're going to click on user widget. There are others here, but we want the user widget for now. I'm going to do WB as widget blueprint as the prefix here for organization underscore and you can call this whatever you want so I'm going to call this health bar just for this tutorial okay all right so just like that I have created my widget blueprints but let's go ahead and see how to use it so I'm going to go ahead and open it up now and a screen just like this will pop up to get this to mount to your uh, to become maximized I like to do this so that way I can toggle between the two now, right here is where you're going to be doing all of your design. Um, I'm creating a simple health bar, but your game could have a whole bunch of other stuff. And I recommend that you have multiple different elements inside of your widget blueprint, such as like your HUD, um, some information maybe. You got a whole bunch of stuff here that um, will be super duper helpful. But for right now, I'm just showing you the basic ideas here on how to just get going. Okay. All right. So. Before you can ever mount something here to the channel, uh, very similar to Roblox Studio, how you needed a screen GUI before you could start placing elements inside of that GUI, Unreal has something very similar called a canvas panel. So if I come here and type in canvas panel, this is essentially where everything is gonna go. And to get this on your screen here, you're just gonna drag this in, just like so. And now you have this canvas panel and you can make this bigger or smaller. It actually doesn't matter, and you'll see why in a second, but uh, just pick a size that works best for you. Okay, now that is going to be the actual size of the box, but um, there's an anchoring tool here, and I'll explain why here in a second. All right, so now I have this canvas panel. This is where everything's gonna go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and drag a progress bar. A progress bar is exactly how it sounds. It's a bar that can either go down or go all the way up, very similar to like a stamina bar or a health bar. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and drag this in, and I'm gonna put it right about here, and drag this out just a little bit here, just like so. All right, so on to this right here. Um, essentially, let's go ahead and open up a web browser so I can explain this a little bit better. Let's say I go ahead and go to a website. Let's say our website, okay? Now, on our website, you'll notice that the way the website looks and how elements are displayed on the screen change based upon how big um, the elements are here. As you can see, as I move this in closer and closer, it gets a little smaller, and as I move it out, it gets larger and larger, and the centering changes, right? So think of it this way. If certain elements, like this about us, right, kind of remain static, they kind of don't uh, go with everything else, right? So the same concept will apply here. If I don't use these anchors, essentially it may look good on my specific screen, but it won't look good on, let's say, somebody else's screen who has something bigger, or in most case scenarios, a smaller screen like a phone, right? So to get over this issue is you wanna use these anchors. This anchors here lets Unreal know that no matter what the screen size is, you always want it to be anchored or placed in this specific percentage range. So you set a bottom anchor and a top anchor, and as you can see, percentages are coming up because it's essentially measuring from here, this is, you know, 21% this direction and then 80, 86 down. So that says, okay, this is 91, 91 this way, 1% this way. Um, 
saying now, let's see here, 21.4% of the screen this way. And essentially it creates a box here based on percents, which means that when the screen changes size or flex or bends, right, the where the nav bar is placed, or excuse me, the health bar is placed, also it flexes with that. So that's why these anchors are super important. Okay, I'm also gonna grab a text box here and call this health bar. Gonna line it right about there. Make this maybe a little bit larger. Call this health bar. Boom, and come here and grab these guys. And again, this anchors this right in place so that it never moves away from where I need it to be anchored. Boom, boom, okay. Now I can come here, I change this the health bar, and you can start like offsetting certain things. So if I wanted to go up or down, I could offset here. If I wanted it to just be more to the left or right, I would do it here. Right now I kinda want it to be right there. Here are the anchors as well, you can change them here. You can also change the text here. Um, some shadowing behind. Again, a whole bunch of stuff here that you can manipulate, but here are gonna be all your settings that you can manipulate and change here. All are gonna be right here. Uh, I won't go super in depth to that right now. Um, you can also come here to the health bar and change all of its settings right here as well. So there's like the fill colors and stuff like that. As, it, as you can see, it has no fill right now, but if I give it a nice red here, it's gonna fill to red, which probably be what I would like. Cool, cool. All right, um, you could also do a background as well, but I won't do that right now. All right, so that's this. And as you can see, I have now created my nice health bar here, and here is my parent-child tree and my hierarchy. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and compile this and save it. Now, to get this to mount to your game, you need to get the character that's gonna be playing your game, or whatever you want uh, this widget to be mounted to. In this case, most likely your character. So, I'm gonna go to third person, blueprints, and here is my third person character. And I normally want to get my setup to look a lot like this. This is my general setup for when I start doing my blueprinting. And I'm gonna come here to the event begin play node. This fires whenever the game starts. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and drag off a node from the last node used in the event tree. And I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna do create widget. This will allow me to, as you can imagine, create a widget. As of right now, I am in the third person character. So the owning player is going to be the um, same as the graph I'm editing. So I'm editing the third person character. So I want this to be constructed to the third person character. Thus, the owning player is gonna be self. Self is whatever instant you are currently uh, using or referencing. Okay, so I'm gonna do uh, self here. If I can spell. Uh, hold on, let me do self here. Well, okay, and that is going to be our owning player. That's going to, oh, excuse me, this needs to be a controller. So I need to do self, and then I need to do, um, actually let's do this. I'm gonna get the player controller. So I'm gonna do get player controller here, and then I'm gonna put that right here. So this is who's gonna have that widget mounted to, is going to be the player controller. Now keep in mind, in things you always have the controller controlling the character. Now I'm gonna come here, and I'm gonna go health bar, which is right here, boom. There you go. And now I'm gonna go ahead and promote this to a variable. This right here allows me to create a new variable called health bar. Boom, okay. Now I've created the widget, but I haven't added it to my viewport yet. So that's gonna be our next step. We're gonna come here, we're gonna go add to viewports. And we're gonna get our health bar. You can do it this way, or you can just drag it like this. Either way is fine. Now, when I compile and save this, I have my health bar mounted. And just like that, you have pretty much your basic setup, and that is pretty much how widgets work. Essentially, you create the widget, you will see in a second here, you can create some functionality in the widget, and then after that, you mount it and add it to the viewport, just like you saw. Nothing too crazy, okay? All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and go back over to my widget blueprint, which is right here, widgets, health bar. And I'm gonna come here to the event graph, which is right here. This is where I can actually start creating a whole bunch of logic that I want to happen with my widget. For right now, 
we're just going to do a set health. But um, if I created a button, for example, uh, here, right, this button could have a whole bunch of events, right? Like on click, on press, on hovered, I could have a whole bunch of events here and a whole bunch of logic happening uh, right here as well. So like if I wanted an on click event to happen, I could do that. I'm not going to do that for this tutorial, but I just wanted to say that you could do that. For right now, I'm just going to create a custom event. And we'll call this set health. Boom. As you can see, my health bar right here is already ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this out. It's name progress bar zero, but that's fine. And I'm going to go ahead and come here and do set percent. Boom. Now, whenever I create this event here, I want to take in an input from whoever's going to use it. And I'm going to name this percent. Boom. And I'm going to come here and this is going to be a float. That's going to go here. And then this is going to go here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and compile and save this. Now, as you can see, the percent is being set. Now I'm going to come here and essentially I am going to get my health bar and I am going to set the percent of this health bar to 100. So I'm going to come here. Since I created that event, now I can do set percent and the game should know what I'm talking about. Oh, wait a second, should be. Oh, set health, my mistake. Uh, actually, yeah, we'll just do set health, that's fine. Set health, boom. And I'm gonna set this to one, which is the same as 100%. And now my uh, health bar will have 100%. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and do um, damage event. So whenever my player is damaged, I now wanna change the health bar. I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna create a float and call this my health. And I'm gonna create another float and call it max health. Okay, I'm gonna compile these and set these to the same number at the start of the game. Okay, all right. Now, I wanna take my health bar right here and I want to, whenever this is damaged, I'm gonna go ahead and set the health percent. Okay, I'm gonna leave that right there. I'm gonna take my health here, or my health, and I'm gonna go ahead and set this. And I'm gonna go ahead and subtract. Boom. Then I'm gonna subtract whatever the old health was here by the damage. Boom. Then I'm gonna set the health there. Then I'm gonna divide whatever the new health is by the max health. This will give me a percent. Drag that in here and drag that here. Go ahead and clean this up a little bit. And there you go. Now, whenever the player is damaged, it will now set the new health correctly. So let's go ahead and damage the player here. Take in some input. Uh, let's take in the one key. And the two key. And let's do damage. Boom. And here I'll apply 10 damage. And then here I'll apply negative 10 damage. And of course we are gonna get self here and plug it into the damage actor. Boom. And there you go. So let's go ahead and test this out. I'm gonna go ahead and save this and click play. As you can see, my health bar is that nice color that we saw before. When I click one, they take damage. Two, it comes back. And there you go, guys. There is a nice, easygoing widget. So I hope this video helped. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comments, and I'll see you all in the next one.